Well, now we know many of you have questions about COVID-19 and that's why we brought in an expert to answer them. Once again this morning, we're joined by Dr. Ben Springate, the Chief of Community and Population Medicine at LSU Health Science Centers. Thank you so much for being here. First of all, yesterday we saw a huge jump in the number of cases from Wednesday to Thursday, about 2,700. And of course, Governor John Bell Edwards said that was because of a log jam of test results, primarily commercial test results. So my question is, how, how is that a messed up like the tracking of the models? Um, it, it is a little bit challenging to try to incorporate that into the models. Um, as I believe the governor has indicated and some of the other um, people who studied this very closely have indicated, one of some of the hard data points that we can use, even if there's a log jam of testing, um, are things like the number of severe hospitalizations and the number of deaths. And okay. so those are going to continue to track along and they are continuing to grow across our state and particularly in our region here in the New Orleans area. And so that's how we're, um, we're tr tracking that very closely at this point. Is it possible that some people got tested twice? Maybe they were waiting so long for their commercial test to come back that they went and got a private test? Um, I, theoretically, that's possible. Um, I think most people would have, you know, waited for their test result, but I, I don't know whether or not there are any controls in place to prevent that from happening. Okay, let's get to the viewer questions now. If I use a CPAP and get coronavirus, should all my equipment be replaced after recovery? That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, I know uh, at a minimum, uh, authorities are recommending that you continue to be very diligent in cleaning uh, your machine and the tubes and things like that according to the manufacturer's instructions. But I think that it also may be reasonable to reach out to your CPAP machine provider and to your doctor who prescribed it and ask them that question, see whether or not um, you know, they may be able to uh, facilitate getting a new one. You do want to limit other people's contact with your machine, uh, certainly, because viruses can can survive on services for a couple days. All right, thank you. We're always talking about those high risk groups. This viewer wants to know, do seasonal or chronic allergies make you more susceptible to COVID-19? We don't have specific evidence around seasonal or chronic allergies at this point. Most of the evidence about susceptibility relates to things like obesity, heart disease, lung disease, hypertension, immunosuppression, kidney disease. So there are a wide array of significant health problems that are very common in our community that do increase risk. I haven't seen any specific data about um, seasonal allergies or you know, chronic allergies. All right. Another viewer wants to know if you swim in a pool, can you leave behind coronavirus in it? Um, you know, the, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have indicated um, that so long as someone is using, you know, chlorine or bromine or these types of uh, cleaning agents, which are standard and to to the cleaning of pools, in general, it's thought that pools are safe. So that's according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. All right, I've gotten that question a lot. Thank you, doctor, so much. We really appreciate your time. Guys, we're taking more of your questions regarding the coronavirus coming up on WUPL. So keep sending them in. Dr. Springate has been so generous with his time. He'll be here to um, answer more of them for you.